Well good afternoon and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now the three plants in front of you are three plants I bought a couple of uh, months ago and we'll do a little talk about them. They're all inter intergeneric, uh, intergeneric plants from the Oncidium groups. Uh, got crazy names on them so uh, we'll just talk a bit ab about them and uh, I've got one planted in ordinary bark and the other two were planted in uh, the coconut husks, the coconut husks which I did. So uh, we, may, we may just have a look at the roots as well, see how they're going on. Well what can we say about these three? Well they're all intergenerics like I've said and they're a real mixture of everything and I'll go into that in a bit. And, uh, the many of these, we're talking about Oncidiums now, they're all, uh, or many of them are epiphytes and uh, they grow in various places as well as that. Um, they come from sort of uh, South America, Mexico, Caribbean islands, places like that, at all, all that, that area. Uh, and they like sunlight, they like plenty of sunlight. I don't think it's advisable to give them sunlight in the afternoons, but uh, that goes the same for all the orchids. Humidity, yep, they like a humidity around about uh, 40 to 60 percent. Uh, as for potting, uh, nice bark mix, something light. I, I mean, why I say I'm going to have a look at these, I might have potted them up in the wrong stuff in the coconut husks. Might be a little bit too heavy for them. Because they like when you water them for the water to run straight through and there'll be plenty of air in as well. Now, they need a light mix. Now, I don't mean light in weight. I mean light in letting the water go through and uh, plenty of air there as well. So when we pot them, we've got to make sure that the uh, the roots are not packed in too tightly. I mean, these sorts of plants have large suitables. These are only small ones, they're more or less seedling plants. And uh, if you overwater them when these uh, suitables get too big, it can quickly lead to root root rot. So uh, make sure you don't overwater them. I would just water them once per week in the nice warmer weathers and in uh, in winter then uh, just water them sort of um, I mean taking into account they've got these large suitables which they can feed off and get the moisture from in winter just water them sort of uh, once a fortnight I'm saying once a week or once a fortnight uh, for watering but uh, you've got to take into consideration how big the plant is because these plants get very, very big. So uh, the bigger they are, the more water they'll need. Now, as far as temperatures go, they like it warm, but they will do very well on intermediate temperatures and uh, they grow very, very well indoors, providing you give them the right conditions. Now, the first plant we'll look at is this one, which is uh, Brasidium Orange Charm, crossed by Oncidium megaglossum. Now then, the Brasidium is evidently a cross between uh, Brassia and uh, Oncidium. Uh, the orange charm just speaks for itself. Uh, now the Odontoglossum megaglossum. Oncidium, sorry. Oncidium megaglossum. I can't find it anywhere on the net. I mean, you can find Oncidiums, but you can't find uh, Megaglossum. So Mega, I take it, something large. And Glossum from the Odontoglossum. So I'm expecting this plant to grow very, very large. Uh, anyhow, we'll see what happens to it. Uh, this one is, is uh, planted in the bark. that one. This one is area 
pagan love song, Sheila. So, uh, McClellan area, uh, classed by the uh, RHS, uh, can also be, uh, uh, let me see, oh, let me think. No, McClellan area is uh, Brassia, crossed Oncidium, crossed uh, Odontoglossum. And it can also be called, according to the RAHS, as uh, Brasidium. So you know that these intergeneric plants can be almost anything. Uh, the, uh, the Sheila type of this plant uh, has received many awards in the late 70s and early 80s. So what can we say about the flowering of these uh, McClellan area, I've no idea. They just, I think they just follow the same forms of looking like uh, Donta Glossums and Shari Babies and, and all that sort of stuff. But I'm really looking forward to these growing quite uh, some time. Oh, I put the label back. McClellan area. And the last of these plants is a, uh, let's have a see, Bialara, Campbell's Glacier. Put the plant back in before I forget. Now on these, there's at least four genera into these plants here. Uh, now the name Bialara is uh, Brassia, Miltonia, Cochleoda, Odontoglossum, and the Campbell's Glacier part is a cross with uh, Oncidium Memoria Donald Campbell. You know, the guy who got killed on uh, Coniston Waters in Bluebird. And uh, that's why it's called Campbell's Glacier. Uh, all these plants are so intergeneric that it's impossible. You know, you'd, you'd have to write a book to list them all. So, uh, I've told you all I can about them. They grow very big. These are only small plants. And they come from a private collection, actually, these. Uh, who were too old to look after them. So a dealer bought them and uh, offered them. So uh, I stepped in and bought three. So let's have, have a look how the roots are getting on in these. Well, the first one we'll take out is the one in bark. notice I've put two covers around all my, uh, all my pots now because uh, I find out they grow better when the roots are in darkness. So this is the uh, Brasidium Orange Charm crossed by Oncidium Megaglossum. So let's have a look what the roots are doing here. I only watered these yesterday so excuse me Oh dear dear, so they will be a little wet. And don't forget these, uh, these types of plants with having small roots are very very prone to uh, root rot. Now this looks very nice, I can't find any soft ones yet. And some new ones. So this won't get watered for at least another week. So we'll put this one back in its pot that it's doing okay and have a look at the ones in the, in the husk. I can expect these to uh, to bloom, but uh, I don't know. Might not be in my lifetime. Yeah, of course it will. Of course it will. These will be blooming in the next two or three years, probably. Oh, 
was that noise then? Oh, that was the gentleman next door cutting his uh, cutting his hedges. You know, I wonder how these would be. Uh, I've made a horrible job of that one, so I'll redo it. They look a little bit big to be mounted, you know, the uh, suitables and stuff like that, but uh, if they're epifies, then they should be fine. I find these little ones much more difficult to pot than I do the big ones. I'll just put this back in. Put the label back in. And that's doing okay. Now this is the McClellan R uh, Pagan Love Song. So we'll just have a look at this one, see how it's going on in the husks. Once again, I can't find any bad roots on them because I did uh, cut all the bad roots off when I first uh, when I first got them a couple of months ago. So uh, they're not doing so bad. You can see how they're twisting round like that because they're in very small pots. So we'll uh, we'll just put this back up. I think that one's okay. Oh, very pleasing up to now. Just hope these settle down and open up a bit. I mean, with them being epiphytes, they just need something to. Uh, to hang on to so they don't need to be packed tightly as long as they're firm. As long as they're firm and have plenty of space in them. So it should all go back in. Make sure it stands upright. Firm enough that put that label back in and have a look at the last one. which is the uh, Bialara Campbell's Glacier. I'm expecting this just to look sim similar to uh, the last one. Yeah. Is that a bad route? No. No, no bad routes on them. 
Just one bad route there, so we'll take that one off. And one here. That's it. Oh, another one there. So just three. You can see why these are prone to root rot with being very small roots. Now I remember once, oh it's many years ago, what's he called on television? Uh, the gardening fellow, Monty Don. He was once talking about orchids and he said the most daft thing. He said the bigger the roots, the less water they want. And the smaller the roots, the more water in the one. Now, if you can believe that, you can believe anything. And that comes from a very famous gardener. So, you know, not everybody knows everything about everything. Not even us on YouTube, we're always learning. very pleased with those three. Uh, not showing any decline, they're showing a little bit of movement and uh, we'll just keep them on some, one side, make sure they're dry and uh, So thanks very much to all my subscribers, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for all the nice comments I usually get and until next time I'll see you all later. Bye.